the NBC Theater presents... Screen Directors Guild Assignment, production Let's Live a Little. Director Richard Wallace, star Robert Cummings. This is the Screen Directors Guild presentation of United California Productions' sparkling new comedy, Let's Live a Little, starring Robert Cummings in his original role and introducing the director of the film, Richard Wallace. Three main elements which go into a motion picture production are the star, the story, and the director. Tonight's star is Robert Cummings, and the story, Let's Live a Little, is ready for your enjoyment. But first, here's the screen director, the man who welded star and story into a perfect unity, and the director of such memorable films as Shopworn Angel, The Little Minister, and Kiss and Tell, Mr. Richard Wallace. Thank you. Thank you very much. The comedy you're about to hear is a far cry from the old days of Max Sennett when I first learned this business of picture making. Our play tonight, Let's Live a Little, throws a series of gentle jabs at the advertising business, and especially at our current concern with the state of our nerves. In short, it's the kind of a story that says, Brother, don't take yourself too seriously. That's why it was fun to make and fun to do again here on the NBC Theater. Now, for the first time on the air, here's Let's Live a Little, starring Bob Cummings in his original role of Duke Crawford. Peace. Quiet and serenity all have nothing whatsoever to do with Duke, who happens to be an advertising executive. Michelle Bennett, his most important client, has already changed her mind three times on the theme of his current campaign. That is why, at the moment, if his nerves were to make a noise, they'd sound something like this. Let's see. Arrange for the Hawaiian band for the radio show and the hula dancer for the convention exhibit. Mr. Crawford. What are you doing in my office? Remember me? I'm your secretary. Oh, oh yes. Oh, hello, Miss Adams. Yes, I'm sorry. Why don't you answer the phone? Because it isn't ringing, Mr. Crawford. Certainly it's ringing. It isn't. It is. It isn't. It isn't? <laughs> no. Miss Adams, why don't you go away? Why don't you just go away? Yes, Mr. Crawford. Funny, I'd have sworn I heard a telephone. Oh, well. I guess I'm just tired. Oh, it's just my imagination. Now, don't pick it up, just don't pick it up. <laughs> All alone by the telephone. It isn't New Year's Eve, Mr. Crawford. I was ringing your phone. You were? I mean, what do you want? It's your fiance, Michelle Bennett. She wants to see you. My former fiance, Miss Adams. Now, throw her out. Oh, Mr. Crawford, Miss Bennett's a client. Oh, please, Miss Adams, no favor, Tiffin. Tell her I'm not here. Tell her I'm... Dookie. I'm. Dookie, so darling. <laughs> well, hello, Michelle. <laughs> the strange thing, I'm, I'm just thinking about Kiss you. Kiss me, Dookie. Yeah, I've got the new contract right here. <laughs> I, I've switched all the backgrounds from Paris to Hawaii just like you wanted, Michelle. Oh, Dookie, you're not going to insist on talking business, are you? Now, look, it's your business, Michelle. If you want to sell cosmetic, you've got to sign a contract. You know, Duke... I have a feeling that once the contract is signed, I won't be seeing much of you. Why, that, that's ridiculous, Michelle. I've got an idea. An idea? Now, Michelle, please don't have any more ideas. I can't stand any more changes. I know, we... darling, and I appreciate all the nice work you've done on that Hawaiian campaign, well, but... Michelle, don't say it, please, Michelle. But I don't want Hawaii. I want Sun Valley. Sun Valley? 
Sun Valley? Sun Valley! Sun Valley! <laughs> Mr. Montgomery, I quit. Uh, Michelle Bennett? Women. Women. I, I, I hate women. Yes, yes, I know, Duke. I've heard all about it. Why can't I work on men's accounts? Tough, hard-boiled, straight-shooting, he-blooded men. Women. Deliver me from women. Get yourself another boy, Monty. I can't stand it anymore. Uh, Duke, even though this is a million-dollar account, I'm going to take you off it for a while. You know, women. I, I, I hate... What'd you say? Yeah, take a few weeks off. Get a good rest. And look, you might read this book while you're at it. It's called Let's Live a Little. Let's Live a Little. That's an original idea. What's it about? Oh, it's about your nerves, serenity of mind. It's just a thing for you. Yeah. Yeah, let's have a look at it. Ah, Let's Live a Little by Dr. J. O. Loring. Who's he? The famous neurologist. Say, let's live a little. You know, Monty, we might work up a swell publicity campaign on this. Oh, no, Duke. You need a rest. Rest? Rest nothing. With the... Monty, this could be sensational. I can see it now. What a slogan. Why not live a little before you die a lot? Every day in every way, let's live a little longer. Give me the phone, Chief. I want my secretary. I want the head of the radio department. I want five artists, three copywriters, two photographers. Have you an appointment to see Dr. Loring? Appointment? No, I haven't got time for appointments. Yes, I can see you're a busy man. <laughs> yes, well, I... What, 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 what are you looking at? Your breast pocket. My breast pocket? That's just, just my handkerchief. I, my hand... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like a pair of socks, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah. Well, I'm, uh... <clears throat> I'm here to talk over the publicity on Dr. Loring's book, Let's Live a Little. My, my name is, uh, is Duke Crawford. Yes, Mr. Crawford, your secretary called. The doctor's expecting you. Let's go right in. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Anybody here? Well, I guess I'll put on these socks. <laughs> All alone by the telephone. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Counting your piggies? <laughs> what? Oh, oh, no, no, no. I, I, I'm just putting on my socks. I, I mean... I see. <laughs> you usually wait till you come downtown in the morning to put your socks on? Well, what's wrong with putting on your socks? <laughs> <laughs> perfume. <laughs> it's funny. I, I smell perfume. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I, I suppose you use beauty cream, mascara, eyeshadow, and pancake makeup too, huh? Now and then. Ah, a woman. Ah, a man. <laughs> yes, and I'm glad to be one. Oh, you don't like women? Definitely not. The most, uh, the most gorgeous, glamorous creature in the world could, uh, well, could be right here in this room, and I could, uh, well, I could throw my arms around her and, and, and kiss her. Yes, yes, kiss her. Right on the lips, and, uh... And, uh... And uh, absolutely nothing. No, I, I just laugh at her like this. <laughs> <laughs> that I'd like to see. Oh, you would, huh? Now, uh, Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford, don't! Uh... <sighs> see? I mean, see? <laughs> I, I'm laughing. Uh. <laughs> what a remarkable sense of humor. Yes, yes. Well, is um, Dr. Loring in there? No, that office belongs to my associate, Dr. Field. Oh, I thought... You're, you're associate? Yes, I'm Dr. Loring. You are? <laughs> I mean, you are? Well, that's, that's funny. I, I thought I was going to see a man. Why? Does it make that much difference to you? Well, well no, it's, it's just that... Well, I found women clients extremely difficult to do business with. With your approach, I can well imagine. Dr. Loring, could I see you a minute, please? Uh, of course, Richard. Mr. Crawford, this is Dr. Field. Hi. How do you do? Yes. And Joe, I just wanted to make sure we were going to hear Professor Burkhauser's lecture tonight. Mm, I'll be ready at 7. Yes, I, I, don't, I don't mean to interrupt you, but isn't anybody going to answer the phone? The phone? <laughs> <laughs> what phone? Well, the phone that's ringing. Mr. Crawford, you mustn't let yourself become excited. Excited? Who's excited? Just answer the phone. Uh, excuse me, doctor. I'll leave you with your patient. Call me if he gets violent. <laughs> he thought I was your patient. <laughs> it didn't ring. It didn't? 
Give me your hand, Mr. Crawford. Oh, but please, Dr. Loring... Your you... pulse, Mr. Crawford? Oh. Tell me, do you drink? Oh, thanks, Doc. Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> Say, uh, excuse me, what, 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 is, what is your first name? Joe. Have you read my book yet? No, I just sell them. I don't read them. Mm-hmm. You really should. Your nerves are in terrible condition. Do you ever hear strange voices? Voices? <laughs> Look, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm, I'm fine. Now, you'll be hearing voices soon, Mr. Crawford. That's your next step. Next step? Oh, well, look, this is ridiculous. I'm, I'm just a little unstrung. Business, you know. Would you like to talk about it? There's a balcony off my office, and it's such a lovely day. Look up. Isn't it beautiful out here? What do you see? Trouble. <laughs> no blue sky? No, just trouble. A woman? Yeah, yeah, it's a woman. Michelle Bennett. Oh, the cosmetician? Yeah, mm. yeah, we, we, we were sort of engaged for a while, for business reasons. Tell me about it. <laughs> Tell me all about it, Mr. Crawford. Yeah, well, you see, her company has a million-dollar contract up for renewal. She keeps stringing me along about signing it. Is she very attractive? Yeah, oh, sure, she's beautiful. <laughs> In a financial sort of way. (laughs) And she's in love with you, but you always talk business when you're together. Yes, something like that. Have you tried being a little more attentive, Mr. Crawford? Attentive? How? Champagne, soft lights, a waltz, perhaps a caress. Then I don't think I'd mind if the contract were barely mentioned just after the waltz. Have you ever been in the pink champagne room? Pink champagne, it sounds lovely. Joe. Would you like to see it tonight? Tonight? It would be wonderful. Wonderful, Mr. Crawford. I was speaking purely as a doctor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, Doc. Well. <laughs> well, your prescription is accepted. I, I take Michelle to the pink champagne room tonight. Yes, Michelle. Uh, Mr. Crawford? Yes? If I... Yes? Nothing, Mr. Crawford. You won't forget the walls. No. No, I, I won't forget it. Well... See you later. Bye. Bye. Yeah, and good afternoon to you, Dr. Field. (laughs) Wouldn't you be more comfortable if you put your shoes on? (laughs) Shoes? Shoes? Oh, yes, thanks. Yeah, I'll put them on when I get back to the office. (laughs) Strange case, that Crawford. Richard, wouldn't it be nice if we went dancing tonight instead of going to that dry old lecture? Dancing? Hmm? Well, after all, Joe, I was under the impression... Some place like... Like the pink champagne room. Oh, Dookie. You waltz beautifully, darling. Oh, I love the soft lights. The violins. <laughs> The soft light of your eyes and the sweet music of your smile, Michelle. You're so charming and attentive. I can't resist you when you're like this. Oh, you can't? I I mean, I'm so glad you're having a nice time. Yuki, I have caused you a lot of trouble, haven't I? Trouble? Why, no, it's been fun. No, I'm sorry, darling. I'll sign the contract now if you want. Contract? What what contract? Duke, why are you looking at that woman? Woman? You go, oh, well, that, that's no woman. That's my doctor. Well, stop staring at her. <coughs> and she wouldn't come with me. Come where? Oh, she, she's beautiful. Duke! She's lovely. Duke! You give... Wh- 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 oh, yes, the, the contract. Yes, right, right here, Michelle. The contract. I'll teach you about contracts, you... M- M- Michelle, you... put on that champagne bucket. Don't, you... don't, Michelle! <laughs> What have I done? To be or not to be. I hate women. Answer the phone. Get me a doctor. Answer the phone. Get me a doctor. Answer the phone. Get me a doctor. The NBC Theater is presenting the Screen Directors Guild production of Let's Live a Little, starring Robert Cummings as Duke Crawford, 
with Betty Lou Gerson as Dr. Joe Loring and introducing screen director Richard Wallace. Look at the moonlight on the water. I never knew Shady Lake Lodge. He's so beautiful. Well, it'd be a lot more beautiful if you hadn't brought that Crawford fellow along. Frankly, Joe, I don't like him. Oh, he isn't just a fellow, Richard. He's a patient. His nerves need a rest. Yes, so I noticed. Well, well, well. The doctor and the, uh, and the doctor. <laughs> well, be professional. Somebody ask me how I'm feeling. How are you feeling? <laughs> no, no, I don't think I'll tell you. My, my doctor here might take it as a breach of confidence. <laughs> then I'll ask you, are you feeling better, Duke? Oh, I'm ready for business. I'd like to discuss your book f- f- with you for a few minutes. Then let's all go back to the uh, lodge. Joe, jo, you, you, I thought that you and I might take a canoe ride while we talk things over. I still think oh, we the ought water to all will be very soothing to me, Joe, very soothing. All right, Duke. Yeah, what were you saying, Dr. Field? Let's all go back to the lodge. <laughs> oh, I'd, I'd love to, but you see, I have a date. <laughs> Coming, Joe? But, 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 but... Do you, do you believe in all those things you've preached since we've been up here? Naturally. About, about letting nothing stop me from obtaining a worthwhile objective? Uh, Duke, I... Uh, and you want me to believe it? Duke, we better go back to the shore. You don't really mean that. I'm your doctor. This is ridiculous. This is... Uh, you said you hated women. Well, that was three other guys. Duke, we, we can't keep this up. Well, we can try. <laughs> no, now, wait a minute. Don't move. You'll tip over the canoe. I hardly think that's possible. The canoe won't paddle across dry land, Crawford. You've been beached here for five minutes. <laughs> well, what do you know? I, I hadn't noticed it. Oh, Richard, help me up. I'm driving you back to the city first thing in the morning, Joe. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong with Mr. Crawford's nerve now. <sighs> Good morning, Monty. Come on in. Are you living a little today? Uh, Duke, Duke, my boy, what's happened to you? Uh, I'm in love, just in love, that's all. Oh, Michelle Bennett, uh, that's fine, Duke, fine. Who, who fine. said anything about Michelle? Say, that was a great little job you did in the Loring book. Now, Duke, listen, I want you to drop everything and get back to the Bennett account. What? You can't mean that. Well, I do mean it. That's your assignment, Duke. Bennett. Always Michelle Bennett. I'd like to take Michelle Bennett and... Yes, Miss Adam. There's a Dr. Field here to see you. Dr. Field? Oh, yes, send him in. Crawford? Oh, hello, Doctor. Sit down. What can I do for you? Crawford, I'll be frank and brief. I've had a long talk with Dr. Loring, and I think there's something you should know. I should? It's not uncommon for a person in your former physical state to attempt to center his emotions upon upon an attractive woman. In this case, your doctor. Well, what about it? Frequently, such a phenomenon has a beneficial result. Dr. Loring felt it was her duty to find out if it would affect the cure in your case. What are you talking about? In short, Mr. Crawford, in Dr. Loring's eyes, you have been, shall we say, a guinea pig. Guinea pig? A guinea pig? I'm sure you'll realize that this is all for your own good. Guinea pig. I'll teach her. I'll teach her who's a guinea pig. No, wait a minute, I've got to stay calm. Miss Adams! Miss Adams! Yes, sir? Bring me a guinea pig. No, I, I'm, I'm cute. I will. Oh, where's that better contract? What color? What color what? Guinea pig. I am not. I want that Bennett contract and send Miss Bennett a dozen organs. Michelle. Uh, Michelle, dear, I, I'm, I'm back. Oh, it's you. <laughs> Yes, it's, it's me. <laughs> well, I, I see you. Uh, I see you got the orchids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I always think of you, dear, when I see a beautiful orchid. Well, it was 
Quite an exciting evening we had at the pink champagne room, wasn't it, dear? I mean, so many things happened all at once. And I, Michelle, no, not the vase. No, don't hit me with the vase. Not again. Michelle! Dookie, darling, are you hurt, dearest? <sighs> no. No, I'm getting so I kind of like it. <laughs> Dookie, look, I've got my fountain pen. I- I'll sign the contract right now. Contract? The contract? Give it to me. Right here. There it is. All signed. Well, let me have it. Not until after the wedding. Wedding? Huh. Why not? Oh, all right. You win, Michelle. Manhattan Towers. Mr. Duke Crawford, please. Hello? Duke? Joe? Joe? Hello, how are you? Oh, all right. I, I, I just wanted to congratulate you. Oh, why? Your coming marriage. I read about it in the papers. Oh, yes, that. Well, thanks. Mm. Yeah, is the book, book selling all right? Yeah, fine, fine. I, I suppose you're all right now. Oh, oh, yes, fine, fine. No more ringing. Oh. Well, I don't suppose there's anything else to say. No. No, I, I guess not. Good luck, Duke. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. Bye. Bye. Joe, I... Joe, you look ghastly. Well, that's funny. You look like Richard. But you... You sound like Duke. Oh, come now. Duke, is it you? Joe, this is Richard. You're hearing things. Richard, why don't you answer the phone? But, Joe... <coughs> it isn't ringing. Oh. Oh. Well, that settles it. You need a rest. Now, I'm canceling our appointment, and I'm taking you up to Shady Lake. A few days there, and you'll feel like a new woman. All right, Richard. Whatever you say, Duke. Yes? Hello, Crawford. This is Dr. Field. I just called to tell you to cancel your publicity campaign for Dr. Loring. Well, what's that got to do with you? I've taken Dr. Loring to the Shady Lake Lodge for a much-needed rest. And as her doctor, I'm in full charge. In full charge? What are you, Joe's husband or something? I hope someday she will become Mrs. Field, yes. Well, that's ridiculous. I'm coming out there to talk to Joe myself. If you show your face around here, I'll be delighted to punch your head. And I assure you, I can do it. Oh, you can, huh? Well, we'll see about that. Dookie, what's been keeping you? We're due at the minister's in half an hour. Well, don't wait for me, because I won't be there. And go and stick your head in a jar of, of your vanishing cream. <laughs> and take your contract with you. Oh, no, you don't. Little Michelle has plans for you. Well, here's your room, Joe. Have a good night's sleep. Thank you, Richard. I am tired. Good night. Good night. Now, open the window. Brush my hair. So to bed. Joe. What? Yeah, it's me, Duke, outside the window here. Duke. Oh, no, you're not. You're my imagination. Your, your what? You're my imagination. I shouldn't even be talking to you. Oh, your, your pal Field is out in front trying to keep your imagination from seeing you. <laughs> Take your voice down. You're, you're not there. You're not there. Here, wait. I'll climb the, climb the window. There. Oh, I must get control of myself. I don't, it's no use. I still see him. Oh, oh, so that's it. Hearing voices and seeing things. So I'm, I'm not here at all, huh? Of course not. It's just my imagination. Mm-hmm. Well, then, if I'm just your imagination, I can't be blamed for doing this. Oh. Talk about imagination. <laughs> Mm. 
All right, Crawford, put up your hands and... Ah! Oh, I, oh, I'm sorry. I was expecting someone else. Where are they? Are they? Duke and this Dr. Loring. If she's asleep. He didn't show up. Oh, yeah? He was ten minutes ahead of me. You don't think he... You don't know Duke. Yeah, well, if he's here, we'd better stop them before they do anything foolish. What's foolish about it? Come on. What? <gasps> Joe, your nerves. Duke, you... You bluebeard! Oh, quiet, please. I'm very busy. <laughs> Joe, darling. Tell him to go away. Let yes. me get my hands on that vase. Duke, where are you? I feel dizzy. Everyone looks like Duke. You no, know, don't throw it at me. I'm not Duke. You're making a mistake. You look like Duke. I know you're Duke. No, no, it's your, your nerves. He's there with Joe. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, my head. Oh, you're not Duke. Why did you pretend to be Duke? Why doesn't somebody answer the telephone? <laughs> the telephone's ringing. Do you hear anything ringing, dear? No, nothing. Oh, it's funny. Every time I kiss you, it sounds like... The NBC Theater has presented the Screen Directors Guild production of Let's Live a Little, starring Robert Cummings and introduced by the director of the film, Richard Wallace. In following weeks, you will hear Robert Montgomery, Rosalind Russell, and Irene Dunn. And next week, the NBC Theater turns to romantic adventure to bring you Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. in The Exile. And now, here again are tonight's star, Robert Cummings and director Richard Wallace. Hey, uh, Dick, you're not afraid of the microphone, are you? What, what are you so nervous about? Nervous? <laughs> I got a right to be nervous. I never want to go through an experience like that again. But you haven't had a word to say since the start of the program. That's the trouble. It makes me a nervous wreck to sit through a half-hour of comedy without yelling, Cut! Not funny enough? Didn't catch on fire? Let's do it again? Oh. Oh, I see. So, so you weren't satisfied with the performance? I didn't say that. Well, now, after all, you directed about... the film. I, I played the role the way you wanted it. Look, well, but, Dick, after all, we've been through so much together. Now, how can you all possibly... Right, all right, You were wonderful. I was not. <laughs> now, you know I didn't play the first scene the way you told me to. Ladies and gentlemen, you are witnessing an example of why directors turn gray. <laughs> well, Dick, I, I'm only kidding. Seriously, here's my chance to do something that's been a long time coming. Express my thanks to that ingenious race of people, the screen directors. If it weren't for that guy behind the camera... The things that go on in front of the lens would be, well, they'd be pretty hopeless. So thanks, Dick. Thanks for all your skill, all your experience, and all your understanding. Thank you, Bob. But all the thanks we want is to be able to keep right on creating films with actors as fine as yourself. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night, Dick. And good night to you, Robert Cummings and Richard Wallace. Also heard on tonight's program were Betty Lou Gerson, Virginia Gregg, Tom Collins, Constance Crowder, John Daner, Sarah Selby, and Dan Ritz. Script was by Richard Allen Simmons, and original music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Production was under the supervision of Howard Wiley. Your announcer, Frank Barton. Robert Cummings is currently being seen in The Accused, a Hal Wallace production for Paramount. Listen again next week when the NBC Theater presents... Screen Directors Guild Assignment, Production The Exile. Director, Max Opfels. Star, Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. Don't miss an hour now of America's favorite music, old tunes and new hits over most of these stations. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.